Hey, what's up with it, guys? Hey, welcome back to another video. Now, I wanted to go ahead and get this one out as quickly as I can. I finally, as of today, have gotten a big chunk of all of my pre-raid bis gear done. And I know a lot of people in the Discord have been asking about pre-raid bis and different items and things like that. I'm generally not a very big fan of the pre-raid bis items where it's just me talking about like one specific item at a time. So what I'm gonna try and do with this video is kind of really give you guys the big bullet points of things that you can be doing via rep and, and maximizing your efficiency to both get you know, enchants and gear pieces and things like that all at one time. There is a lot of alternatives and I'll show you some resources to look at those alternatives for various slots where you could have three or four different items in a single slot and it's going to basically be the same. So rather than go through a bunch of specific items, let's cover some of the big important things that I think you guys should work on that are going to give you the most bang for your buck. If you have four or five hours of game time you're trying to put in and try and really get as much gear and enchants and things like that with that time that you guys are spending. So with that being said, first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and put some of these links down here in the bottom, um, but we have a couple of resources here. Now, I'm going to talk about that one here in a second, but I'm also going to link you guys the pre-raid BIS list for uh, on the TBC Wowhead website. This is a really good resource for you guys. You're not going to be able to see raw like damage values or, or you know stat weighted values of these items on this sheet however it is going to have all of the links right here to be able to see if it comes from a quest or if it's a world drop and things like that so if you take something that's maybe your second or third as far as your pre-rate options it's going to basically be the same. I highly encourage you guys to get the stuff that is going to be less of like a random dungeon drop type of thing off of a boss drop and all that kind of stuff and go ahead and aim for the things that are like quest rewards or maybe inexpensive world drops that are on the auction house. Things that are guaranteed so that you're not spending a ton of time and sinking a ton of time into stuff that's going to be like a two DPS upgrade overall. So don't waste your time. Be efficient with it. Go through this list and see which of these items are easiest for you to get and which ones you have the actual time to do that and again i'll link that down below now first and foremost the two major big pieces i want to talk about here are our helm and our legs now if we look at this pre-raid bis list shoot i keep clicking the wrong link sorry guys if we look at this pre-raid bis list if you guys are not aware the spellfire robe Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's not what I meant to do. The, sorry, the uh, the spell strike hood and the spell strike pants are our actual bis for phase one and the spell strike pants here, right? So helm and legs. So let's talk about it. Helm and legs. If you're a tailor and you plan on getting the set, you know that the spell cloth cooldown is a four day cooldown effectively, and it's going to take you guys a while to get the 20 spell cloth that you need to craft the full set. So this is actually a really, really good alternative. The fact that we can knock out both our helm and our legs with one basically quest chain is a very, very big deal. So I highly encourage you guys to do this. Now, if you guys are Alliance players, I don't believe you have access to this helm but you do have access to the legs basically doing the same thing but the alliance alternative. If you are a horde, because horns are better, then you have access to the Maghari Ritualist's horns. This is the quest reward from this quest here that I have highlighted here. Again, I will also link this in the description below. Hero of the Maghar. Now this is the last quest of a relatively long chain and it was a little bit confusing at first. This quest, in order to get access to picking this quest up, you've had to complete three other quest chains. Now if you're like me, I didn't quest at all in Nagrand. I did it almost entirely in the dungeons and getting different rep dungeon grinding, as well as doing some scryer uh, rep farming stuff just out in the open world, or you could do the same thing for Aldor. But fortunately for us, this guy, 123744, made a very detailed explanation of what you need to do in order to unlock this stuff. So all of these are basically little prerequisites that you need to do. All of the yellow text that you see here will link you to various quests, and it's very, very, very descriptive in here, so I highly encourage you guys to use this as your kind of resource and figure out which of these you have or have not done. But basically, 
once you finish this and you get to where you've unlocked the last portion of the forge camp quests, you're actually going to be able to go back to garage in that camp and pick this quest up and start this specific quest chain. Now, I didn't do any of this until I was 70. So this is actually a pretty good source of gold. You probably make four or five, 600 gold, something like that, and just quest gold if you haven't done any of these chains. Not to mention there's some very good blue items along the way for off-spec healing pieces and things like that. Now, the helm is going to be very, very, very good for our pre-raid. The other thing that's not really mentioned here is this is obviously Maghar rep, right? So we're getting a ton of Maghar rep for doing it. Once I finish that whole quest chain, you can see I haven't done any additional like bead farming or anything like that. But you can see we're like 3,000 rep into Revered. So just by doing all those quest chains, I got revered. I didn't have to go and just mindlessly farm stuff. I got it just by doing that whole quest chain. Now, one thing that's weird, though, that I didn't really understand is that you actually get Shatar rep from the last portion of those quests. So this is why I really wanted to make a point about this specific chain. Um, let me see, because some of this stuff, you go to Achindan. So see here, for example, you get Shatar rep. So I actually hit revered with Shatar from finishing this quest chain as well. I obviously had some some rep that I had done before from various like turn-ins and quests, but it's important to note because Shatar is the rep that we're gonna be using for our helm enchant as well as this trinket, take the riding crop off. This trinket is also a very good option for your pre-raid set. So Shatar rep is very important in general. This quest is gonna get you the Maghar, so if you're Horde, you're gonna get your helm covered, you're gonna get your legs covered, and you're gonna get some Shatar rep as well, which is your helm enchant and a really good trinket. So that covers a lot of bases just by doing this one specific thing. So I really encourage you guys to do that because it's gonna be something that's worthwhile for the time investment for sure. The other thing that's really big about this is since this is both our helm and our leg slots, you can invest the gold into the enchants, right? Like the spell cloth you see, I have the 25 spell damage, 15 stam enchant, as well as the helm enchant on this because we're not going to be replacing these until we get our phase one bis. So it's worth worthwhile. You're going to be able to sink the money into those items early and get the value for raiding with them for weeks and weeks and weeks until you can craft the full tailoring set or the two pieces from the tailoring set. So that's a really, really big takeaway. That, that's a really big one. If you take nothing else from this video, take that away because that's like a really, really big bang for your buck. A lot of value off of just that quest chain. Now onto the neck piece. As you're leveling, if you're dungeon grinding, our best option is a neck piece out of Shadow Labs. I literally haven't seen it drop a single time. So if you can't get that, this is a very close second and this is actually from a quest in Blades Edge that is pretty simple and easy to get to. And again, all of this stuff is going to be here on this, um, this Wowhead link. So you can look at most of my gear I have is already on this. Of course, I scroll past the neck piece. Um, so you can go back and look through this or go ahead and just search any of these pieces. But you can see here the Houndmaster quest in Blades Edge. So you can go ahead and just check these out and see what you need to do for the chain and go and do it. But again, I encourage these ways of getting gear where they're guaranteed, you sink a little bit of time in, go do the quest chain, make some decent gold and have a guaranteed drop at the end rather than trying to farm Shadow Labs you know, 25 times and still not get this to drop. So don't worry about this. If you're not able to get this from Shadow Labs while you're leveling, Go ahead and get, you know, get this done. And so at least you have something out of the way. And then while you're running Sh Shadow Labs Heroics, things like that, you might be able to get access to that as well. Now, the second big takeaway, these are probably the, the, the two biggest points are the helm and leg thing that I just told you guys about. And the second one is going to be with our shoulders and our chest. Now, our shoulders and our chest, our actual bis is going to be our tier four shoulders and chest. Both of those slots with our tier token is going to be insane. Tier four shoulders are going to be a little bit tough. I'm not sure if this is a bug, if it's going to get fixed, but when I cleared gruels this week, there was only one shoulder token. Usually, and on beta, there was two tokens. So if there's only going to be one token, that's going to be really problematic because it's going to take a long time or a lot of RNG to be able to get that, but that is our actual best in slot. Now, when we're talking about our chest piece, that's off of mag. You're going to have a similar issue because mag is not going to be a very easy fight as far as people clearing it regularly, clearing it with the same group so that you're not like bringing in new fresh people that don't have their tier chest piece. So it's going to be a whole deal. That being said, we have two really good options that are very, very slept on. And I haven't seen anyone really talk about this or mention this at all. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys. Mana etched shoulders. Now, these 
at surface level are not super exciting. They're decent. You got a couple sockets in there. That's nice. This is going to allow us to put the veiled gems into them, giving us a little bit of hit as well. But the big thing that I want you to take away from this is the two set bonus. Now the two set bonus is 35 hit rating. That's absolutely insane. 35 hit rating is a ton for a set bonus. It just It doesn't exist on like any piece at all, or if it does, it's at a sacrifice of a ton of other stats. So with the shoulders, which are going to drop from heroic slave pens, is a relatively easy heroic. Most people run this right now, even before people have good gear, every single day because you can skip a huge portion of the trash. So if you're able to get these, these are a pretty low drop rate. There's a bunch of different numbers of that I've seen. They're very low. I haven't seen them drop yet, but if you can get your hands on these, these are insane. And reason being, like I mentioned, is because of the two-piece, the chest is going to be dropping off of the last boss here in Old Hillsbrad Heroic. Now, this is going to be a tougher piece to get, and now this is going to be something you're going to have to kind of aim for or might be one of those pieces that you're working on for a while. But again, it's something that you can have that you're working on because getting your Tier 4 chest piece is likely not going to be something that you're going to be accomplishing very quickly at the beginning of the TBC Phase 1 launch. So, what we're going to be trying to do is get our Mana Edge chest piece, chest piece and the shoulders, so the chest piece from Old Hillsbrad, shoulders from Slave Pens, and that's going to give you a 35 spell hit rating bonus from those two pieces. And again, you're not replacing those until you get your Tier 4, which is BIS for the entire phase. So already we've talked about those four major pieces, Helm, shoulders, chest, and legs, all of which are going to be your pre-raid BIS options that you will not be replacing until you get your absolute best in slot for phase one. So these are the things that I'm aiming for. The two heroics I'm trying to do every day is Slave Pens and Old Hills, Bradfoot Hills. Those are the two biggest priorities for me from a gearing perspective. Any other ones you can do on top of that are icing on the cake. Obviously, there's some good items and good upgrades here and there, but the fact that this is going to give you 35 spell hit as a set bonus is absolutely insane from an overall stat value. One thing you guys need to know and take into consideration on any of these lists when you're looking at the um, the way any of these things are weighing and in, in, in saying which is BIS and which is not, they're not calculating. It's very, very hard for a lot of these to calculate in any kind of set bonuses. Procs are also very difficult in a lot of situations. Um, so just keep that in mind because some of the things, for example, like uh, the spell strike set bonus, some of them is not like calculated on like the 70s upgrade website. It's not calculated in there. It's just taking the individual raw stats on the piece. And that's how it's like quantifying how good it is. So keep that in mind that anytime that there's something like this, that's like a little more uh, kind of like a fringe set bonus type scenario, it's not really getting caught in a lot of these bislets because, bislets because it's taking the individual value of the piece and it's not factoring in like you have a second piece of that set. So... That being said, those are all of the big, big, huge pieces that those are all the takeaways. If you want to go ahead and leave the video now and go ahead and go start farming those heroics, those are the really, really, really big ones. Now onto the cloak, there's actually a pretty decent world drop cloak uh, that drops that you can get. And I can't remember the name of it, but it's on that wow head link. Uh, you can check it out there. You also are going to have a good cloak off of the last boss from Sethic Halls. That's actually technically our pre-raid bis. So while you're farming rep going, uh, you know, getting all your dungeon grinding done and you're running Sethic Halls, keep an eye out off the last boss. There is a Spellcaster Cloak with hit rating on it. That's the one that you want to try and grab. If you don't get it while you're running Sethic Halls, I would not go back to Sethic Halls and try and farm it. There's plenty of other options that are going to be right in the same ballpark. Even by the world drop one, it's like 100 gold. It's not very much. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the cloak. Now onto the bracers, bracers of havoc. These are relatively inexpensive as far as the overall materials go, and these are your best in slot for phase one. So this is one of the few items that you can easily craft early on. Go ahead and put a good gem in it. Go ahead and farm up the mats for the enchant because you're going to be keeping this until phase two comes out, and maybe even in phase two. But these are really, really good. You can go ahead and look this recipe up online, but there's not hard to farm. I think it took me like a few hours to farm up the mats and, you know, go and get the enchant and all that fun stuff. Now onto the gloves. There's a lot more options. I got lucky with Kara um, and getting the tier four token. So I've just been using those, but there's a lot. You can see all these blues here. There's world drops you can buy. Basically six different dungeons have 
drops. There's like shattered halls. You can get the, uh, the oblivion gloves like are really good. There's a lot of good options in various dungeons. This is one of the ones that you should be able to over the course of doing all these dungeons while you're leveling and doing heroics. See some of these that drop worst case, maybe try and pick up this BOE, uh, that's a world drop. And that's kind of like a safe option there if you're not able to grab the tier four. Now onto the belt, there's obviously the tailoring belt that's very good. Um, both Spellfire and Belt of Rumination, I think is what it's called. Um, very, very good. But both of those are pretty expensive. We have a couple heroics you can run, things like that. But again, this gets into where your you, amount that you're gaining for the time investment is going to be really, really minimal with the exception of Girdle of Rumina Ruination, which is 10 Shadow Cloth, I think. Shadow Weave, whatever they're called. Um, so that's going to be a big one. I'm planning on just kind of crafting these and saving them, and maybe we make it later on. If not, this is a really good one from a, a Heroic, uh, from Heroic Architraz, and then these blues are also pretty decent as well. So there's a ton of options. Don't stress too much on the belt. A lot of these are really good. I have this one from Steam Vaults. Um, I think this was just from normal Steam Vaults. Pretty decent. Hit rating, damage, it's fine. On to the boots. Now the boots, there's actually a few options. Oh, let me, let me say this really quick. There's one thing I did. I forgot to mention on the chess piece. I actually messed this up. This Achenai, I'm not even going to try and say it. This is a quest reward from a quest that's outside the crypts. And I totally missed the fact that this was an option. And I think I vendored it because I can't find it. So keep an eye out for this because you'll get this around like level 64. And this is still technically going to be your pre-raid bis at 70 until you replace it with your tier set. Okay. Tier set's not showing on here, but trust me, the tier set's piss. So keep an eye out for this. Again, this is another world drop for the chest slot that's a pretty inexpensive one, but you can see it's got no stamina on it, and it's just damage, hit, and int. So that's okay, but not very well-rounded piece of gear. It is going to make you a little bit squishy if you get too many pieces like this where they have no stamina on them and are relatively low with like the other stat weights, so just keep that in mind. But this is going to drop, uh, or this is going to be a reward from that quest outside of crypts. Now onto the boots is the same thing. That's what made me think of that is that there's uh, quest reward boots right here. Shatrath jumpers. Now the DPS difference between this and the sigil laced boots, which are a drop off of Architraz, you can see here. These are almost exactly the same. When you like compare the stats side by side, you lose like a, you lose some crit, but you gain damage and so it's i mean you're talking about like two dps difference it's going to be negligible so if you aren't able to get these from architraz don't worry about it just go ahead and get the ones from these quests and call it a day and don't worry too much on the boots because these are basically as good as everything else now the moonstrider boots are way farther down here but these are actually really good and part of the reason these aren't weighted higher on a lot of the dps spreadsheets is because most of the dps spreadsheets give zero value to mp5 so these have 6 MP5, which is obviously not going to give you DPS value, but having some pieces with MP5 is definitely a good thing. So don't let these be, you know, go under the radar for you because they're not like ranked really high on some of these lists. These are still very, very close to these other boots. Obviously not quite as good, but you can see I actually have these Shatrath jumpers in my bank and I still use these because I just like having the leather and a little bit of MP5, a little bit more stats. But if we're trying to get real try hard with our damage output, we might throw some spell damage gems in these and use these instead. Onto the rings, tons of options. I'm not even going to really go over them. I'm still using rings from Classic. Um, but yeah. And then the trinkets we talked about, uh, the Shatar rep, I actually was using Briarwood Reed before this until I got, uh, Ziri's gift. So the Shatar rep is a really good trinket, obviously. And the Scryer rep, these are your two, I would say easiest, most reliable trinkets that you can get in your pre-read setup. There's obviously things like Quagmire's Eye, uh, from Slave Pens. Is that what it's called? Quagmire's Eye? Quag Quagmirin's Eye. This is also very good, but a little bit kind of RNG with this proc chance thing. Um, I'm basically just using these until I save up for the uh, Badge of Justice uh, damage trinket. That's going to be my first purchase with the Badge of Justice. And then having both of these, these are basically the same exact trinket. One's just crit and one's just hit. So if you get in a scenario where you already are hit capped in your other pieces of gear, it will be nice to still have access to this to be able to go ahead and trade in that crit and be able to use that. But these are basically both minute and a half cooldowns. You can use a macro. I'm going to make a separate video going over macros, but you can use a macro where you just have one key bind that will use both of these kind of like back to back. So those are the two go-to trinkets. Now, idle 
uh, sorry, Ivory Idol of the Moon Goddess. This is out of Shattered Halls off of the first boss. You kind of have to farm. This is like one of the few pieces that you really do want to farm this because this is very significantly our best idol for raid encounters and just overall raid DPS. The only, This is literally the only thing on this list so far that's like a dungeon specific thing that you're going to want to get. So Shattered Halls. Go ahead and farm this. Hopefully you get lucky and it drops. It dropped on my first run. Um, but this is a big pickup and you definitely want to get this. Now, on to the weapons. There's literally like 50 options. I mean, not exactly, but th there's a ton of options. If you really want to get crazy, you can try and get Lower City Exalted. There's a good mace there. But tons of dungeons. This dagger is from Shattered Halls. There's a staff from Black Morass. There's another staff from, I think, Botanica, I think. There, there's all kinds, so don't worry too much. All of these are basically weighted the same. If you do have the main hand and the off hand, you're going to have a little bit more spell power than any of the staffs because the staffs basically have the same spell power um, as the main hand. However, you are going to get more secondary stats, more stam, more int, more crit, more hit potentially from the staff, depending on which staff it is. So all of those are going to be very close to each other. I would recommend the one-hander with the off-hander, but that's just my personal preference. If you like using the staff, go ahead and go for the staff. But my plan, my hope is to be able to get the off-hand in Kara from Nether Spite and the dagger off of Prince. So that's what I'm trying to go for, so I'm kind of trying to already gear for that, so I'm ready for that. That's my plan uh, going into Kira. So before I lose my voice, guys, that's really all the main points of stuff I wanted to mention uh, for from a specifically a pre-raid BIS, all of the big things that I wish I had known and I could have started farming earlier, and now hopefully you guys know them and you know the big points to kind of take home and go farm, the stuff that is going to be 100% items you're going to be able to get from different quests and quest chains and things like that. Check the link down below in the description. Let me know if there is anything that I miss as I'm sure there's some big pieces that I left out. Hopefully you guys are enjoying TBC as much as I am. I'm having a blast. I'm really, really enjoying this and I'm looking forward to all this content that I want to make here over the next week or so. So keep an eye out for that. Hit that sub button if you guys didn't and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.